Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. In this session, we are going to continue our lesson on chapter 5, Plain Stress Transformation. In the previous lesson, we have learned about the introduction of plain stress transformation and more circle. So, in this lesson, we move to the thin wall pressure vessels. This is the lesson outcomes. At the end of this lesson, the student should be able to describe the types of thin wall pressure vessels, describe the types of stress in pressure vessels, and calculate the maximum normal and shear stresses in pressure vessels. Basically, there are two types of pressure vessels. The first is cylindrical pressure vessels, and the second is spherical pressure vessels. Here is the basic dimensions that we have to know. P is the internal pressure, where the pressure inside the tank or inside the vessel. R is the inner radius. And T is the wall thickness of the vessel. The pressure vessel is defined as thin wall pressure vessel when the inner radius is 10 times greater than the wall thickness of the vessel. Next, we move on types of stress in pressure vessels. Basically, we have two types of stress, which are normal stress and shear stress. Hoop stress or sigma 1 and longitudinal stress or sigma 2 are the normal stresses, while maximum shear stress is the shear stress. Next, we move on the cylindrical pressure vessels. The hoop stress, or can be called as tangential or circumferential stress, is the stress induced in the cylinder due to the circumferential failure, while the longitudinal stress or axial stress is the stress induced in the cylinder due to the longitudinal failure. As can be seen in the figure here, the length of the cylinder or the horizontal plane is the longitudinal plane while the perpendicular plane to the longitudinal plane or more exactly the tangent plane to the circular cross-section is the circumferential plane. If we take a small element at the vessel surface and we draw the stress element, the horizontal stress becomes sigma 2 or longitudinal stress and the stress perpendicular to the longitudinal plane is the hoop stress or sigma 1. These are the formulas for stresses involved. Hoop stress or sigma 1 equals to PR over T and the longitudinal stress or sigma 2 equals to half of sigma 1, meaning that sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 and then sigma 1 will be the maximum normal stress. For maximum shear stress, basically we have maximum in plane shearing stress and maximum out of plane shearing stress. We are going to use maximum out of plane shearing stress to determine the maximum shear stress. It corresponds to a 45 degrees rotation of the plane stress element around a longitudinal axis. Maximum shear stress equals to sigma 2 or equals to PR over 2T. P is the internal pressure. R is the inner radius and T is the wall thickness of the vessel. For spherical pressure vessels, there is no specific plane as cylindrical pressure vessels. So sigma 1 and sigma 2 can be in any directions. So the maximum normal stress is expressed as sigma equals to PR over 2T. And the maximum shear stress is half of the sigma which is PR over 40, where P is the internal pressure, R is the inner radius, and T is the wall thickness of the vessel. Let's have a look at the example here. A cylindrical pressure vessel has an inner diameter of 1.2 meters and thickness of 12 millimeters. Determine the maximum internal pressure it can sustain so that neither its circumferential no, its longitudinal stress component exceeds 140 megapascal. From the information given, we know the internal diameter is 1.2 meters, 
wall thickness is 12 mm and the maximum normal stress is 140 megapascal. From here, we can find the inner radius, which is 600 mm. And we know that for cylindrical pressure vessel, the hoop stress is twice greater than the longitudinal stress. So, the maximum normal stress refers to the hoop stress. Then, the longitudinal stress will be 70 MPa. But, if we assume 140 MPa as a longitudinal stress, then the hoop stress will be 280 MPa, which is exceed the limit of the question. So, it will be wrong. Okay, after that, we use the equation of hoop stress to find the internal pressure of the vessel. Then we get P equals to 2.8 MPa. Then, under the same conditions, determine the maximum internal pressure that the spherical pressure vessel can sustain. The information given are same as previous. For spherical pressure vessel, we have sigma equals to sigma 1 and equals to sigma 2. Then the maximum normal stress will be equal to PR over 2T. Then we get P equals to 5.6 MPa. If we compare the value of internal pressure between cylindrical and spherical pressure vessels, we realize that the spherical pressure vessel can sustain the internal pressure twice greater than the cylindrical pressure vessel. Now, we are at the end of our session. Let's we recap what we have learned just now. First, we learn about the types of thin wall pressure vessels, which are cylindrical and spherical. Then the types of stress in pressure vessels, which are normal and shear stresses. And the last one is the steps to determine the maximum normal and shear stresses in pressure vessels. That's all for this session. You may continue to watch the example of pressure vessels in the next videos. Thank you.